In this episode I'm going to show you how to hand piece a hexagon quilt and embellish your crocheted edge. Hi, I'm Jo from Elsie Grays and today I'm going to show you the process of making my latest project, Joanna's Hexagarden. There are two methods of making a hexagon quilt. The traditional way of English paper piecing, where you're using papers in a template, or hand piecing your hexagons, which is the way I'm going to show you today. These are some of my favourite tools. I love the gold eye milliner's needles, some thread, your hexagon all cut, a 0.7 millimetre mechanical pencil, a quarter inch ruler, pins, very fine pins, some scissors and a needle threader if you need one. Once you have your hexagons cut, you're just going to draw a quarter inch round all six sides. And as you can see here, I've drawn right to the very edge so that you can see where you can pop your pin in there. I like to draw the lines on my fabric in batches, roughly 20 to 30 at a time. When you have finished drawing your quarter inch line around all your hexagons, I like to lay mine out so I know roughly what they're going to look like when they're sewn together. You can sew them in this format here, like a grandmother's garden, or you can do them in rows. First step on sewing your hexagons together, I'm going to choose two hexagons and put them right sides together. Remember I talked about this little cross line here? Your pin is going to go right in that cross there and right through the other side. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to, to find the other side. And we're going to pin there and same on this corner. Matching up those lines as we go. And if you feel comfortable, you can pop one in the middle as well. I normally don't need to. After sewing so many together, it just all comes together. So we're going to start right in this corner, right where that pin is, and I'm just going to pop a little back stitch in there. I pull out that pin, and I'm just going to do a little running stitch, making sure I'm sewing on the line. And then I turn it over and check that I'm on the line on the other side. So I'm doing three to four stitches. Another little back stitch. Always checking that I'm on that line on the other side. So three to four stitches, back stitch, three to four, back stitch, right to the very end. And then I just do a little back stitch when I get to the end. And then I pull out that pin in that corner. Now your first two, you need to tie, tie off here and cut your thread. And I'm just doing a little knot there. And that will hold that securely. For some reason, I just do an extra little knot and then I cut my thread and your first two hexagons are sewn together. Your next hexagon is going to sit in there. So again, we find our corners with the pin in there. And remember, you've got to pull over that seam to find that corner and pin there and then one at the beginning again here. And then this one you sew along here and then you can take it up and sew it up to there but I'll show you how to do that. Always make sure you've got a knot at the end of your thread as well. 
again right in that corner little back stitch take out that pin and then a gathering a running stitch again three to four back stitch check the other side Back stitch, pull that pin out. And now this one, we can just flip that over and we're now going to sew from here to here. It's really important to sew along the lines on both pieces so your quilt will fit together perfectly and sit nice and flat. Now you've got the hang of sewing them together, keep going until you've reached your desired size. I found this method of hand piecing so much quicker than English paper piecing. I felt like it came together a lot quicker by not using glue and papers. It's a great portable project that can be worked on anywhere and any time. My favourite place was in front of the TV watching True Blood. <laughs> Once you have finished piecing all your hexagons together, you can iron as you go or what I did was I ironed right at the end so all my seams were going the same way. Now that you have all your hexes sewn together, we can now square up your quilt ready for quilting. This is just a little sample that I've uh, put together here. So we're just going to take off these little um, points here and across here. So with your ruler, your rotary cutter on your board, we're going to cut those off there and pretending this is the top of our quilt just going to cut across there. If you're taking your quilt to a professional machine quilter, your quilt must be squared up with no dog ears, pressed nice and flat and have your backing and wadding four to five inches than your quilt top. Once your quilt top has been quilted, the next step is to complete your binding and crocheted edge. These steps were covered in our first video, how to crochet an edge on your quilt. On this quilt, Joanna's Hexagarden, I decided to add an extra little touch with a strip of fabric threaded through the lovely crocheted edge. The pattern for Joanna's Hexagarden can be found on our website as a PDF downloadable pattern. Joanna's Hexagarden quilt was made from various tilde ranges. I love tilde because they all blend and give such a gorgeous scrappy look. At Elsie Gray's we have put together some kits and now available for purchase. Our kits include 400 pre-cut two and a quarter inch hexagons, saving hours of cutting, yarn for your crocheted edge in three colour options, fabric for your crocheted edge embellishment and pattern. These can all be found on our website, along with some pre-cut packs if you choose to make your quilt that little bit bigger. Thank you for watching our second video and the support and lovely comments we received after our first video. We really appreciate it. On our next video, I will step you through making the Elizabeth Mary quilt, which is a hand applique technique using papers. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more inspiration.